welcome back to the channel. Today I'm headed over to Nissan to finish putting the Hellcat tires on the Trackhawk wheels because my tire machine was incapable of doing it just because of the anti-de-beating uh, flange on the wheels. So I have a friend over at Nissan. He does all my alignments. He does all my tires. I got back from Nissan. My friend mounted the 35 series Hellcat tires on the Trackhawk wheels and it was almost the same process as mounting GTR wheels and tires because he had to put like these big beads all the way around it to keep the tire press down. But I really like these wheels now with the, uh, you know, the shorter sidewall, the Trackhawk sidewall is, you know, they're 45 series, so it's just way up there. But one thing about these is uh, I'm probably gonna have to go a little bit wider because these are, 10 inch wide wheels and i'm probably gonna need at least 11 11 and a half but uh yeah i'm just glad that these are bolted on and uh we got some 305s on them these are the old tires off the the hellcat before i went to the nittos and what i'm going to do today is try to get the subframe tacked in there i have just a little bit of cutting a little bit more of cutting to do also the subframe needs to go up about five inches and I need to measure and I think it needs to go forward about two and a half inches to make this centered. As you can see, this tire is hitting on the frame right there. So it is definitely not centered. And you can see right there, pretty much it's too, if, uh, if I put this on an alignment machine, this would have way too much, I think it's negative caster. So uh, we're just gonna have to move the subframe forward and up, which shouldn't be that big of a deal. And then I'll have a little bit more room if the subframe's forward because the axle was getting very close to that bolt. So if it goes forward another two and a half inches and up, I'll have more room to push it up. And I really wanna stuff this thing up there. I have really been considering going dry sump with this thing because the pan is only two inches thick and uh, it's not too thick back there, but Two inches thick is, uh, a, well, it's 1.8 1 1 inches thick. So it would be a little bit, probably another inch, I could push the diff up, which, uh, you know, every inch counts with, uh, with all this axle angle and I wanna keep everything kind of true so I don't have any issues with axles breaking. I'm able to get the Trackhawk subframe or lower part of the subframe with the control arms up as high as I could. So it's almost touching the oil pan and the steering rack is also almost touching the oil pan. But if I do go dry sump, I could push it up higher, but I don't think anybody, so I'm probably gonna end up selling these subframes because I'm sure a lot of people are gonna wanna turn their Hellcats into all-wheel drive Hellcats. So requiring everybody to get a dry sump system is probably not the smartest idea. So I'm gonna leave it where it's at. If you look right here, you got the flashlight. So it's uh, pretty much as high as it can go. It could probably go higher, but if the engine rocks, I don't want to have any issues with it, uh, let's see, with it hitting anything. So I mean, it's right there at the top. And uh, on the other side, let's see, on the other side, I need to, I'm gonna redo the whole subframe so don't, don't be mad about all those cuts and everything. It's not how it's gonna look. But uh, the other side, you can see that the diff is uh, almost touching the oil pan right there, that bolt. So I don't think I could get it to stuff up there anymore. And if I did keep going another few inches, you can see the back is gonna start hitting the, the part of the tranny. And I think the starter goes on that side. I'm actually pretty sure, eh, maybe the starter goes on this side. Can't actually remember, but yeah, it is very, very high up there. I don't think I'm gonna have any issues with it uh, being charger right height. You can see how, how high the axles come out or where the axles come out. I was having issues with it interfering with that bolt, but then I noticed it was too far back, so I pushed it forward. Actually, this side is a little bit too far forward, so this part of the steering rack needs to be centered with that hole. And then another thing I'm gonna do, so on the Trackhawk, the, uh, the subframe starts further back, if you guys remember, and bolts in, and then it bolts in the back. So on the charger, there really isn't a spot to bolt it in on the back, subframe-wise, because both subframe bolts are there and there. But what I'm gonna end up doing is making a plate that goes right here, 
because on both sides there is these two bolts and they're they're I'm not exactly sure what they're used for but they're there and uh, I'm gonna make a plate have a piece of when I remake the subframe it's all gonna be chromoly tubing and then just have it come down and then just tie it into the back of the subframe because the control arms on the back go there and I want a little bit of support in the back because I don't wanna have any issues with launching and tweaking the subframe, especially if the only bolt is up there. So then I'll have six points of mounting, which will be a lot more rigid. It'll also probably make, it should make, not probably, it should make the chassis a little bit stiffer in the front because it'll have it you'll have it tied into the outer part of the sheet metal or the outer part of the rail and uh, just come underneath i'll just bend it with my tubing bender and i think i think that'll be a very good idea so now what i'm going to do is actually cut a few more things on here most likely tack it on to the charger v's or u's or whatever you want to call them the things that are holding the engine up then i'm going to start working on fabricating the tranny tunnel and the drive shaft tunnel, which I need to cut it a little bit further up, which isn't that big of a deal. And then uh, just probably cut it a little bit there and uh, cut it a little bit there. So I shouldn't have too much more to cut and I should be able to just cut the foam on the back of the carpet and it should just fit in there in that part, just as it would if nothing was done to it. So I shouldn't even be able, I shouldn't even really notice it or any, nobody should really notice it until you get to the transfer case part, which is a big transfer case there. So, and it's not even that big. So let's get to work, tack that up, cut a little bit more, tack it, get it all set in there. It's been a pretty slow process, cutting, test fitting, cutting, test fitting over and over again, but I have this pretty, pretty close to where it needs to be. So the diff is as high as it can go with the factory oil pan. Like I said before, I'm probably gonna end up running a dry sump on this engine or the built engine, but I wanna make these subframes so people don't have to buy a dry sump if this becomes you know, a very, very uh, common swap. Because I know a lot of people with Hellcats have traction issues, a lot of people wanna be fast, being all wheel drive is uh, gonna be very important. I think a lot of people are gonna wanna change their, tra or change their Hellcats over to Trackhawk trannies and uh, make their Hellcats all wheel drive. But yeah, so I have the, uh, the subframe pretty centered and I have the drive shaft, the front drive shaft level. So it's not protruding as far as I thought it would at the, uh, by the gas pedal. So I think we're gonna be okay there. What I'm gonna end up doing is getting a piece of three and a half inch exhaust pipe um, like schedule 10, I think it's schedule 10, the thick stuff that you get off like Summit Racing. And uh, I'm gonna make it pretty much go across the whole drive shaft, just in case the drive shaft comes apart. It's really, really thick there. And then I'll just put two flanges on both sides and then tie it into the, uh, the tranny tunnel and the bottom of the floor. And then I'll build this whole section right here, but we're getting very close there. So what I'm gonna do now is I need to figure out center on the car or center on the unibody and then i need to find center on the track hawk you know lower subframe the piece that i cut apart so what i'm going to do is actually go off of the track hawk arm locations so there's one in the front one in the back and then on the charger i'm going to go off of the subframe mounting locations these should actually be centered on both of them so what I'm gonna have to do is I have these plumb bobs right here. If you don't know what these are, it's just a little weight on a string with a point. And I'm gonna run some tape lines off of those points and I'll just run tape lines on the floor. So I leveled the car, I leveled the transmission, um, you know, as it would be in a track hawk. So the, uh, the engine does have a little bit of a slant. The subframe also has a little bit of, a, of an angle to it because the arms, the lower control arms have to have an angle, and uh, but they are completely flat in the subframe. So the subframe has an angle, or I'm, I'm guessing it has an angle, to have the uh, correct suspension geometry, which I'm really, without being on a line machine, I'm, uh, I'm guessing. So um, once this thing gets on a alignment machine, I'll be able to verify my measurements, but 
yeah, let's get to using the plumb bob. And what I'm gonna do is pretty much just run that string off of some bolts, um, put some nuts on these things, go all the way forward, all the way back, and then figure out where the center is. Um, and then just kind of adjust as I need to, to get this thing centered. up kind of going a different route that I was planning on doing last night. So I started using the plumb bobs last night, putting lines on the floor, and then it was just getting really, really tedious and time consuming because you have to wait for the plumb bobs to stop wiggling. Then you have to take the line. Then if it's off, you have to redo everything over again. So what I ended up doing was buying one of these laser homies and uh, they self level. So what I did was I leveled the subframe, then I went off of these bolt faces. So I shot a laser across those and then evened out or measured from this hole to that laser mark. And I, I'll probably show you guys a little bit, but um, it's, it's really tedious and time consuming. So recording it's a little bit more difficult and uh, got that centered. And since that's straight, the back straight, and uh, we're at the correct height the axles are in the correct position and uh, I actually leveled out the drive shaft over there so we shouldn't have any issues with the drive shaft and uh, it looks like that axles actually in alignment with that hole um, so the oil pan has a mark where the axle goes it's kind of hard to see and I don't have a flashlight messing with the laser for quite some time now and I think I have a very good plan of attack. So what I'm doing or what I have done is both those strings that I marked with a plumb bob, I marked them from the center or the outside center of the lower control arm bolt and the center of the rear lower control arm bolt. So what I ended up doing was actually moving that line in line with the bolts on the subframe. So the two bolts are in line on both sides. So both those lines right there correspond with that. And what I found was I was 15 millimeters too far over this way. So this piece of tape represents how far over 
I need to make this outside where that laser is right now, come over to that tape line. And once it's over there, the subframe should be centered within the, uh, so the, the lower control arm bolts should be centered within the, uh, the chassis. So once I have that done, I could recheck my height and then I should be able to weld everything in place and uh, we should be 100% ready to go, which I'm very, very excited about to uh, finally get the subframe welded in. It's pretty much gonna wrap up the subframe project on the charger. It is 100% in there and welded. It is just, I just put a bunch of straps in there so it stays welded in there. So it stays centered exactly where I put it. The laser alignment, it's not for, it's for houses and building houses, but it worked out very well. It has auto leveling. I made sure the car was level and then I leveled everything and aligned everything. So I think we're gonna be good with all the suspension. I went off of the lower control arm um, holes as well as the, the front holes, the rear holes. And uh, then I went off of the, the subframe bolt pattern and I think we're gonna be spot on for all the suspension. The suspension is centered. I measured the control arms, they're the same length. It's not like they're different lengths or anything. So I don't think I'll have any issues. Like I said before, I'm just using this subframe to make a jig and then I'm gonna make a tubular subframe. So don't, don't, uh, don't judge it too hard because I just use scraps and everything to hold it together. So it's, it's gonna be perfect for the jig. But other than that, once I'm done with the jig, I'm just gonna throw it away and uh, just kind of go from there. So my drive shaft angle, um, I pretty much zeroed out the drive shaft so it is level with uh, the, the transfer case and the diff. So I don't think we'll have any issues there. The next video I wanted, well, the next video I don't wanna, next video I'm gonna build the uh, transfer case, part of the, the tranny tunnel and the, the, the part that's gonna encase the drive shaft. Like I said before, I'm gonna go with a larger higher performance drive shaft. So those are actually three inches in diameter all the way, which with how low it is towards the gas pedal, I'm not gonna have, I don't think I'm gonna have any issues with the gas pedal or the carp or anything like that. So I'm really happy how this is coming out. It was a ton of work to get everything lined up. I was just kind of fighting it. I wish I had a 3D scanner, but I don't, you know, I'm not big enough to have companies giving me 3D scanners and I don't wanna buy a, you know, $100,000 $120,000 3D scanner. So maybe eventually I'll get one and uh, then I'll just be able to scan this stuff, make a jig up in, in SolidWorks and then just send it off to uh, a company to manufacture it. But how we're doing it now is just, you know, how any backyard person would do it. Just with the laser tool, it worked a lot better. So I'll put that link in the description if you guys are interested, interested in which one I used because it worked out very well. The only thing that I didn't like about it was the lasers kept shining in my eyes and it was just kind of annoying uh, especially with me moving around the car and it had three different axes so now that that's done we'll uh work on the training tunnel in the next episode then after that's done i could do the i'll probably prime this car after that's done roof prime the roof and then we'll make the mold make the carbon piece paint the car and uh, then i'll glue the roof on and clear over the roof and everything should be good to go. So we're moving forward. This was a very big undertaking and I'm, you know, I, I feel like I got it done pretty quick. So now that that's done, we'll, uh, I might send it off to have one made, not exactly sure. I wanna tuck a lot of different things up in it. So I wanna redo the engine mounts and stuff like that just because I feel like they're a little bit bulky and I could save a little bit of room if I do it all tubular. But uh, that'll be in another episode. If you like these videos, make sure to click the subscribe button, throw a thumbs up, throw a comment below, share with your friends. As always, see you guys next time.